We also have a great opportunity tonight to hear from one of our uh, young cadets, uh, I guess our older cadets since he's a senior. Uh, Kevin Clancy uh, has been preparing a talk for tonight that is uh, I have been uh, given a paper preview, so I won't spoil it, but I think it's a pretty special speech. So let's welcome Kevin up here to the podium for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mose. There's a bookstore in our neighborhood called Wild Rumpus. My mom used to take my siblings and me there when we were little. I went past it the other day and was reminded of that special place, a place built just for kids. Because the front door stands just four feet tall and the door handle fits perfectly into the hand of a five-year-old. Inside, it's not just a store full of children's books. It's a place where magic occurs, where love of reading and imagining are nourished. It was purpose-built for kids, and it works. And it all starts with that little purple door. Three years ago, I stood in front of another set of doors. These were not small, three-foot doors. They were big, heavy, and a little intimidating. These doors were purpose-built, too. Not for young children, but for young men, for cadets. Little did I know, for how could I know, what gripping that handle and pulling it open would mean for me over the next four years. Of course, for the architects of St. Thomas Academy, for many of you who have come before me who opened those doors and walked through them, you know this. So I grabbed the door handle, took a deep breath, and walked in. The first thing I noticed, not a single girl. I knew St. Thomas was all boys, but other than there being no girls, I didn't really know what that meant. I learned fast that it meant I could be a, mo a boy among boys without a lot of distractions. It meant I could be a diligent student because at St. Thomas it's cool to do well in school. It meant I learned how to share, like wearing someone else's shoes or his unwashed gym shorts. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. We share low boos and hisses when someone thanks his girlfriend at his senior speech. We rehash our weekends over lunch and the possibilities for next weekend. But ultimately, we get to be ourselves in a testosterone-laced place without the competition that there might be at a co-ed school. It is difficult to convey the all-boys aspect to non-cadets who often ask, how bad is it to go to a school with no girls? And I can't blame them, unless you've experienced it you really can't know how much fun it is each day. Soon a second door opens, called Service Opportunities. At St. Thomas, boys are encouraged to do service. I have participated in Feed My Starving Children through the Key Club here for three years. We pack food for people outside of our borders, people who do not have the simple necessities that we take for granted each day. In the faces of the hungry children during the short video preceding the food packing, we see brief glimpses of doors that are closed, doors that are off their hinges, doors that are absolutely broken. But the people who receive this food help me to see outside my four walls, my comfy life. They remind me to be thankful for all the graces that God has given me, not something that I've earned, a gift that has been given. Poverty calls us to sow hope. Pope Francis wrote that last year, and that's what service at St. Thomas reminds me of, to try to sow hope. And to watch a little more closely next time I'm walking past a door that I do not understand, a door that scares me. St. Thomas instills in me the responsibility to step through it, to do it without fear, to do it with love, to lead. Which puts me in front of my third door, leadership. I recently learned that about 35 years ago, the way the academy handled leadership changed dramatically. It was not all on the shoulders of the military instructors anymore, the way it had been for so many years before. Some of it was now shouldered by us, the cadets. 
That must have been hard, but what an amazing opportunity it was for us. Today, leadership opportunities at St. Thomas abound, like peer ministry and campus ministry, and of course, leadership opportunities within the military department. I started by learning to be more responsible, first for me, my shoes, my uniform, my person, but soon for the cadet, soon for the cadet next to me, in my squad, my platoon, my company. This St. Thomas leadership dimension exists nowhere else in Minnesota, perhaps nowhere else in the United States. This door starts out heavy, but over time becomes lighter and more natural. Finally, I must talk about those doors that we all walked through tonight. St. Thomas was founded 129 years ago. It moved to this campus just 49 years ago. And last year, 40% more beautiful space was added to these facilities. Catholic, college prep, leadership, and now these facilities. St. Thomas is truly an amazing place. On behalf of the more than 600 cadets that walk through those doors each day, I say thank you to all of you who have made this building campaign a reality. Wild Rumpus, the bookstore with the funny little door, was purpose built for kids. So too is St. Thomas Academy. It was built with a special purpose in mind, a place where boys of all shapes and sizes enter, then four years later, stand shoulder to shoulder on the cathedral steps as young men, better prepared to make a positive impact on our world. Countless doors have been opened for me over these past three years. My prayer of thanksgiving is for all of you who have made this possible. And my promise to you tonight is that I will always strive to open doors for others as I move forward from this amazing place. Thank you.